Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here, uh, just sharing some recent finds, stuff that I've gotten over the past, um, I don't know, couple weeks, something like that, since my last recent finds video. Um, definitely a really good haul too. It's been a while since I've gotten, you know, like a a, um, a really good amount of new stuff in my collection kind of all at once. Usually it's kind of finding a piece here or there, but uh, you know, I had some, I did a lot of selling over the the holidays, and I think it's always good on eBay too, because it seems like that's when people get, you know, gift cards and money and everything, so they tend to, seems like they buy a lot of records. So I decided to kind of um, let my PayPal account really build up and do kind of one, you know, kind of nice Japanese pressing purchase. So I kind of did that and picked up some really good stuff, and um over the holidays, local record stores were carrying some really good stuff, some nice music on vinyl stuff that I'll share. And then I also went to a record show uh, last weekend. And like I said, for the first time in a long time, probably the last three or four shows I've been there, when I basically walked out with nothing, and this time I actually ran out of money. There was actually a couple or one more piece I wanted to buy that I didn't have enough money left over. And it's been a long time since I've, you know, because I usually go in there with a certain amount of cash and I just kind of tell myself, that's all you get to spend, because uh, I'm not rich. <laughs> so, uh, and this is one of the first times, literally, there was still more stuff I wanted to buy and didn't have enough money. So that was exciting that I finally had one of those shows. Uh, so yeah, this is just kind of a combination of all that good stuff, so let me dive right into it. Uh, let's start off with the Japanese. Actually, I have like five CDs I'll show here really quick. Let me just get those out of the way. And these were just, and I've forgotten a number of CDs, but these are kind of some of the cool ones that stood out to me. Grace Jones, I'm trying to get her discography on CD, which I think is kind of nice. This is Warm Leatherette, you know, I love Grace, really cool. Slave to the Rhythm. And on that, that Warm Leatherette too, in case you're not familiar with that, one of the cool things on this is she does a cover of um, Tom Petty's Breakdown, which is kind of, kind of a nice track. And then uh, Bulletproof Heart. So that, that's some, some cool Grace Jones pickups. Also, Lou Donaldson, Midnight Creeper, probably my favorite album by him. That has a different album cover than the vinyl, so I thought those just kind of need to show really quick. And then one CD doesn't pop up too often, or even an um, album for that matter, vinyl. Audio 2, What More Can I Say, one of my favorite hip-hop albums from back in my childhood. So. So just kind of you know some cool CDs that I found there I wanted to show, but let's start off with uh, let's start off with the Japanese pressings, then we'll do the music on vinyl, then all the other stuff. So, and most of these are all replacements. I think pretty much all of these albums I had, um, yeah, pretty much all these albums I had on you know some type of pressing, but kind of some nice upgrades. So Philip Bailey Continuum. And again, most of you probably know Philip Bailey from Earth, Wind, and Fire. And this is kind of when he went solo. Great song on here is a song called I Know, which is probably my favorite solo, or my favorite song by him from his solo career. Yeah, I'll put these here. And I just showed this in my vinyl tag video that I put up from yesterday, but Kiss Dynasty. This is one of the ones I found at the... Um, at the record show, which was nice. And he had a, a, a number of other Kiss uh, Japanese pressings too. I just you know, couldn't afford all of them, so. But that was a great find. I can do it like this. Howard Jones, definitely kind of some great 80s stuff there. One of my favorite 80s artists. Definitely kind of defines the 80s sound for me. Uh, this is Dream in the Action. You know, so here you got songs like uh, Things Can Only Get Better, uh, no one is to blame. I mean, just, you know, great 80s stuff. Ready for the world, my boys. Jerry Curl. <laughs> but yeah, oh, definitely one of my favorite 80s R&B albums right here. This, this one is magnificent. I mean, songs like, you know, Tonight, Digital Display, Oh Sheila, which is probably the one that most people know, Slide Over. I mean, oof. That is a bad 80s R&B album right there. Uh, still working on the Pat Benatar collection as far as changing everything over to the Japanese pressing, so that's a great addition. Pat in her early days, 
in the heat of the night. And so this one here, you know, you have Heartbreaker, um, We Live for Love, some of that great stuff. And again, you guys have heard me say it probably literally in 10, 11 other videos, but do not sleep on Pat. Do not let her get lumped in your head as part of just the cheesy 80s, love is a battlefield and all of that stuff. I mean, and again, I always say that too, love is a battlefield is one of my favorite songs by her, but Pat can rock it. That, that, that chick can rock as hard as anyone. So uh, do not sleep on her at all. And I'll keep saying that every time I show a Pat record. And uh, this was one that's kind of a long time waiting to. I've been so wanting a Japanese pressing of this, which is Billy Idol's Rebel Yell. I mean, this album just plays such a significance for me in my overall musical life because and because uh, I, when I was in fifth grade, the first album that I ever bought out of a store that wasn't just some dub thing or whatever else was uh, I asked my parents to, for Christmas to give me a copy of Billy Idol's Rebel Yell. And Billy Idol was, was my introduction to all things New Wave, MTV, everything. The first time I ever turned on MTV, Billy Idol, Eyes Without a Face was the video that I saw. And I was just like, that dude is freaking cool. Who the heck is like him? And then it was just, that opened my entire world to New Wave music. So this album definitely holds a very, very special place for me and always will. And even that cassette that I got in fifth grade, I've shown it in some other videos, I still have that exact same copy to this day in my, my cassette collection. But moving right along, Duran Duran. You know, Seven and Ragged Tiger, you guys know this one, you know, of course the Reflex, and which is probably my favorite Duran Duran song. Well, I don't know, they have a few. They have a few that are kind of nice, but it's definitely one of, one of my top three songs. I mean, it's just kind of such a cliche song with them in the 80s and everything else, but it's because it's a good freaking song, that's why. Um, Journey, Escape. And you know, this is their hard hitter right there, because you know, over here you have Don't Stop Believing, you have Open Arms, Who's Crying Now. I mean, this is kind of the album that really, really just threw them to the uh, stratosphere, if you will. Ray Parker Jr., <laughs> Woman Out of Control. Another great album from the 80s. Um, I mean, overall, the, the album is okay. Like, the songs I really like, I like. The other ones are, you know, kind of okay. But it has my favorite song by him, which is uh, I Still Can't Get Over Loving You. And, and the one thing I, I like to say about that song whenever I talk about it is, uh, you know, Mojo here on YouTube had one of those top 10 things of, uh, like most stalker-ish songs or something like that. And I think the number one, of course, was Police, like Every Breath You Take, or, or it was like something like that. But I Still Can't Get Over Loving You was not even on the list. And I think from a crazy stalker standpoint, probably one of, one of the songs that captures it better than anything. Because it's just a guy, you know, talking about how I'm hurting, I can't get over loving you. And at the beginning, he's just talking about, you know, how he's confused and he's just kind of hurt and I, you know he can't get over loving her then he starts talking about how you know it's not your fault you know i understand that you don't feel the way that i do uh i'm just hurt and i can't get over loving you. and then somewhere like towards the end of it he takes this weird turn where he becomes kind of psycho and it, it turns in from like i can't i can't get over loving you to i'm i'm not through loving you and you know don't try to leave it'll be the last thing you ever do i mean there's like lyrics in the song and it just takes this perfect going from heartache to dark psycho turn. And um, and I don't know, there's always something about that. I just kind of thought, that's a, that's a pretty creative song. It's, I don't know. But again, if you haven't heard it, check it out. Listen to it from front to back and pay attention to the lyrics. Um, moving right along. Rick James, throwing down. You know, Rick James has tons of great stuff, but uh, this has... Again, arguably my favorite song by him, which is 69 times. Just some good old funky stuff. And, and this one actually kind of represents something else in my collection because this is a white label promo. So this is my first Japanese pressing of a white label promo that I've gotten in my collection. So very, very beautiful piece. Love it. But yeah, 69 times, Dance With Me, I mean, 
Yeah, that, that's that's an awesome. Stand, Standing on the Top, which was the reunion song that he did with The Temptations is on here. That, that's a great album. Uh, another one I found at the record show, which is White Snake Trouble. <clears throat> the uh, I guess the white cover as opposed to the black cover that I have with my other other pressing. And this is a Japanese pressing. It just didn't have the, the obi with it, which kind of sucked. But, he, but again, he had it at such a great price, I had to pick it up. So some more good early white snake. Okay, and so that's it for the Japanese pressings. And let me kind of show you the music on vinyl stuff that I picked up. And this is Camel. I've, seen, I've heard a few people mention this band here in, in the BC. Um, this is Moon Madness. Uh, just kind of some, some, just kind of some interesting prog stuff. You know, just strictly instrumentals. No, I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any songs with any lyrics on here. I think it's just kind of one big instrumental thing. But yeah, just a really cool piece. I've heard of the band, but had never heard of this album. And you know, just kind of gave it a listen and thought, oh, that sounds pretty cool. I need to pick that up. So um, that's some cool prog stuff. Another classic I think should be in everyone's collection, which is Buddy Miles, them changes. You know, and you know, Buddy is um, Buddy's amazing, plain and simple. And of course, you know, when Hendrix went to the band of Gypsies, Buddy was kind of in his band, and you know, so he kind of has that flavor that you know. R&B, it also kind of that rock type of thing. So he, he has a great mixture. There's some nice horns too on this album. So you kind of get a little bit of everything. It's just very musical with Buddy. Uh, the Strokes, this is it. Again, pretty common album. You know, here you have Last Night and you know, that type of good stuff. And this is the the other cover too, which is kind of nice because I, I have a I don't know no, necessarily know what the other pressing is. I kind of forgot now, but the one with you know like the orange and yellowish cover and everything, and then this is the one with the with the booty. So, <laughs> but a nice music on vinyl pressing. So that's the main reason I wanted to get that one, as well as Muddy Waters, Hard Again. So this is a nice one to get back in my collection. You know, good old Mud Boy, one of the kings of the blues, right there. And yeah, you know, and again, it's all kind of all kinds of great stuff on this. It's just you know, Muddy Waters doing his thing. Definitely one of his more popular albums. Herbie Hancock. And here you have Sexton. Here again, another nice music on vinyl pressing. Really cool albums. Kind of you know when Herbie was in his fusion, you know, kind of explore trying to mix different things from different cultures and that type of thing and i mean he really kind of nailed it on this album here so definitely kind of a nice jazzy fusion you know funky kind of thing by herbie so really really cool album <clears throat> excuse me and then so that's it for the music on vinyl pressings and then the rest of the things here are just kind of random different things and i knew this record show was going to be a heck of a record show because when i went in I went to one table and flipped through really quick, saw good stuff, but just nothing I really needed. Went to the second table, and I'm, so I'm not even in the place for 10 minutes, and I stumbled across like one of the records that's on the top of my want list. So that kind of let me know this was going to be a good day. And it was this one right here, which is Betty Davis. And they say I'm differently. <laughs> um... Yeah, you know, I, did, I did a video not too long ago, uh, just a couple weeks ago or so, kind of doing an artist spotlight on her, and this was the one that I still needed. And I mean, and, you know, there were kind of a, a lot of them online, most of them kind of overseas, but some online, and and there were issues like this were running like forty five dollars, you know, anywhere from thirty five to forty five dollars, and I just you know didn't want to pay that much for it, but I really wanted it to kind of complete my Betty Davis collection. So when I walked into the second table and I'm flipping through and it's like, boom, and it only had, it was $19 on it. I was like, sold. I was so freaking pumped. So that was great for that to be the first thing 10 minutes into the show. I was like, this is going to be a good record show. But uh, but yeah, Betty Davis, really glad to get this one in my collection. That, that definitely marks one off the list. 
and I talked about her in a previous video. So like I said, just go back one or two videos ago. I do an artist spotlight on her, and um, you can get a good feel of why you should have some Betty Davis in your collection because she is awesome. This is another one I picked up at the show, which has been quite a few years trying to get one of these. Well, find one at a price that I was willing to pay and in good condition. And I sure enough stumbled across this at the record show, which is Anvil's Metal on Metal. Probably my favorite Anvil album overall. But um, yeah, again, to find one in just you know perfect condition at a great price was awesome. Same here. Kind of a replacement, Diary of a Madman by Ozzy Osbourne. That was one I had to purge a little while ago, so uh, nice getting the, you know, nice brand new reissue. The Best of the Impressions. Another good one there. I really don't have any impressions in my collection, which I, you know, was kind of weird when it when I you know, kind of thought about that after I picked it up and looked at it, I was like, I don't have any impression albums. Um, I mean, I have a lot of Curtis Mayfield stuff, but no, nothing by just the impressions. So just kind of a, you know, a nice, the best of, nice little pickup there. And Leon Bridge is Coming Home. Another album that I had seen so many times and just kind of passed over, never paid that much attention to it. And I was watching some movie uh, like a week or two ago, and the song uh, River came on. And I was like, whoa, that's a really good song. So I went to the credits at the end to see who it was, and it was Leon Bridges. I'm like, holy cow, I need to go actually go get that record. So so it is definitely a, a good record. I mean, there's a couple of very specific songs that I, I really like, like especially like The River, for example. I think that's an amazing song. Overall, I would say kind of an... A good album but somewhat of an average album to me mainly because he's awesome because he's trying to go back and do the old school thing he's going back to just the the the, the great greatness if you will of 60s R&B which is fantastic he doesn't quite have the chops to do it you know I mean he's a good singer and again good album some songs are great but just Overall, you know, when you're trying to go back and reproduce uh, what Otis did, when you're trying to reproduce what Wilson Pickett did, you know, when you're trying to go back and, you know, emulate Sam Cooke, I mean, going back to their era and doing their stuff, that's a freaking mountain to climb, you know? And again, he does a good job, but it's just still, on some of the songs, I kind of get that feeling of... Yeah, you know, if you, if you if Otis was doing that song, mm, but but still a good album, definitely worth getting. And, and again, that song "The River" is is amazing. Uh, another piece you just need to get back in the collection. I mean, you guys know this one pretty well. Harry Chapman with um, "Cats in the Cradle." Always a nice, fun song to listen to. There's and there's some other. If you haven't heard this album all the way through, you know you can find this in dollar bins everywhere. In fact, I got this one out of a dollar bin. Um, but um, definitely an album to throw in and kind of listen to because if you know that song, but you know Cats in the Cradle, but don't know the rest, the rest of this album is kind of strange. It's not exactly what you would expect. So uh, it, it could be an interesting listen, even if you just get out of the dollar bin and listen to it for once and then give it away or take it back to a Goodwill or something. It's worth a listen. Um, the Flirts. I found this version of this album. Uh, which is a uh, you know calling all boys. The I'm not sure if it's the American version or whatever, but I have another version that's called Ten Cents a Dance. Exact same track list, different covers, but uh, you know finding this this other cover here or the other version of the album. Again, for only two bucks, great pickup. The song that most people would know, probably know off of that one is uh, Jukebox. You know, don't put another dime in the jukebox. I don't want to hear that song no more. That's the flirts off of that album. And talk about the dollar bin spitting up some other great stuff at the, the show. Grand Central Station. I mean, that was a heck of a find right there. Some great funk with uh, Larry Graham, who, as you guys know, was a bass player, Sly and the Family Stone. And this was kind of a blind buy 
at the record show. It was only four dollars though, so I thought it's kind of worth it. But um, Fun Boys Three, I had never heard of them, but when I saw that cover, I was like, okay, I got it. I got to check this out because I, I can't tell what the heck is going on in this album. But then, kind of come to find out, I guess these were members that broke away from the specials. Well, I guess it kind of says it on the, the hype sticker there too. So I thought, well, heck, the specials were pretty freaking cool. So let's give this a try. And yeah, it was. It was, um, you know, kind of the type of thing you expect to hear from the specials. Um, so th that was a, a new find. And again, another great dollar bin find at the record show. Sealed copy of Carly Simon, No Secrets. So that's another, another great album. My favorite Carly album cover. Um, I love that shot of her and that with the hat and everything. It's just so just so 70s I don't know and then of course this has a song you're so vain which is probably her most popular song I would think overall but it's also my favorite song by her too so that's that is all the stuff that I've gotten in over the past what's that, past couple weeks or whatever so it's been a great great haul that's for sure a lot of awesome stuff added to the collection so as always VC thanks for watching let me know what you think and um, we will talk to you soon all right, take care, guys.